Guardians of the Galaxy coaster eventually went vertical this week. We have some news on the rumoured Epcot Hotel, and also there was a fire right in the middle of Magic Kingdom. Stay tuned, we've got all that coming up on this week's What in the World. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's What in the World, the show where we take a look at the last seven days of Disney World news. We'll start with Magic Kingdom, but don't forget to stay till the end for this week's merchandise update. On Friday, there was a flood of tweets and also Facebook posts as the head of the Maleficent Dragon caught fire right in the middle of Liberty Square. This happened during the Festival of Fantasy Parade about 3pm. Disney handled this very quickly and there was no harm to any cast members, the driver of the vehicle or any guests. Now we can see in the video the fire and the thick black smoke and cast members also attempting to extinguish the fire. There were also some photos posted later on of a heavily damaged dragon being removed. Now what this means for the future of the Festival of Fantasy Parade we don't know as this is one of the most popular floats and there are many questions to be answered first like what actually caused the fire to happen, will the float be repairable and if it is will it be used without any fire effect in the future. Only time will tell if we'll see the Maleficent float again but I'm just very happy that no one was injured. This week Disney added a pre-show to Splash Mountain in an effort to reduce wait times and also increase efficiency. There are now two screens that display this new video, the first one being where the fast pass queue and the normal queue meet and then the second one is displayed right before you get onto the ride itself. This new video shows guests how to correctly pull down the lap bar and also where to store your items in the minecart. Splash Mountain isn't the only attraction to retroactively add a pre-show video, as Space Mountain, Toy Story Mania and also Seven Dwarves Mine Train have all added these in an effort to drive ride efficiency. This week saw permits being filed with the South Florida Water Management District for Disney to create a 30 acre temporary site to stockpile earthworks near the Magic Kingdom. Now we don't know exactly what this is for as of yet but the documents name it Stallport Site and this is probably because of the location near the old Stallport which was built in the 1970s. For those who don't know Stall stands for short takeoff and landing and before Orlando International Airport was built it was part of Disney's plans to build their own airport to connect guests directly to the magic and we can see this on this 1971 map. However as we know this never came to any fruition. Now back when Bay Lake Towers was under construction Disney used a lot of the Stallport's paved areas for storage of the materials and trailers so it's possible that this site could be used again to support some sort of construction. Now there have been a lot of rumours, some of them including a second DVC tower, a contemporary back from 2016 and also a rumour in 2017 about a volcano themed hotel. There's also a third possibility in relation to the work at Disney's abandoned water park River Country. Now we did mention this a couple of months ago as permits were filed to test the site for the viability of something. We'll only know exactly when Disney wants us to know what this is going to be. More hotel rumours in Epcot news this week as permits were filed which show work could begin very soon on the rumoured hotel at the Epcot entrance. Now last year there were two possible sites that were being evaluated. Now on Wednesday 27 notices were all published referring to JP EC 8060 and all had the address of Avenue of the Stars. Now this address just happens to be the backstage road that encircles Epcot. Now the fact that many notices were published tells us this is a big project and the Epcot Hotel would certainly fit that description. Clearing is also underway for a retention pond related to the hotel and thanks to Blog Mickey we can see some of the land clearing taking place. We can also see from one of the permits that the current area being cleared is Pond A Phase 1 as marked here. Now when completed this pond will take up the entire green section making room for the Epcot entrance hotel somewhere in the yellow section. Now we're still not sure exactly where this entrance hotel will be but all these permits point to work starting very soon. 
Now back on the show on the 12th of March, we spoke about the space themed restaurant and the rumours that this could be placed in either a brand new location right between Mission Space and Test Track or there was also rumours floating around at the time about this being placed in the Wonders of Life pavilion, however I thought this area was too big. Well this week Disney announced that the new space themed restaurant will be built in a new building that will be right between Mission Space and Test Track. Patina Restaurant Group, who runs a lot of the restaurants around the resort, including Via Napoli and Epcot, will be operating this new location. Last week we showed you just how much concrete and just how much work it took to build the Guardians of the Galaxy Coaster Foundation. Well Disney isn't wasting any time and this week the ride has started to go vertical. We can see the first wall of the Gravity Building is now up behind the Universe of Energy and is in the west of the site and more steel also seems to be staged nearby ready for installation. The ride won't be open till 2021 but that's not stopping the pace of the construction going into this ride. Now for those of you who are off to Walt Disney World soon, A I am jealous, but also B Toy Story Mania will be closing for a week. And this popular attraction will be closed from June the 11th to June 18th to complete the new queue entrance for the attraction. Now we've mentioned on the show before about how the current entrance on Pixar Place will be moved onto the opposite side of the Toy Story Mania building, which will put it right into Toy Story Land. Now this will also mean that Pixar Place will then become a backstage area. Once completed, it's only going to be a matter of days before Toy Story Land opens. Have you ever lost something in Disney World? Sunglasses? A phone? It's easy just to put something down as you're looking in your bag for something and then just walk away and forget to pick it back up. Now currently the process is to wait for 24 hours and then give Lost and Found a call but on May 21st this is all about to change as Disney rolls out a brand new process for Lost and Found. The Disney Lost and Found website will be available for reporting and also tracking and eventually receiving items back. If you lose an item after May the 21st all you have to do is report it on Disney's Lost and Found website. You'll then receive periodic updates until you're reunited with your lost item. Now this should make for a much better guest experience and make it a lot easier as well. Disney this week has started selling tickets with pre-selected FastPass Plus options. The new ticket is a one day, one park ticket and is linked to the FastPass options by Disney, which means guests don't have to worry about trying to secure any ride times themselves. The catch on this is that the ticket needs to be used the next day, which means the FastPass Plus sections are also valid for then. Also, no more restrictions about using all three fast passes before you can book another are in place. There's currently no additional cost to book this one day ticket over a normal one day ticket, which is great for guests who want to just pick something up and go. Now, there are various fast pass plus options available for each park, so here's a quick look. Disney's minivan service has been slowly rolling out since June 2017 when it was only available in a few select hotels. Now Disney this week have told us it's now available from all resorts. Minivans will pick you up anywhere on Walt Disney World property normally quite quickly and it's very useful if you want to get from resort to resort or if you want to be dropped off at the front of the parks where the likes of Uber and other services can't go. Now the fee for this used to be $20 but not too long ago that was up to $25 and that's a flat fee to travel anywhere on Disney property. It was only a couple of months ago that Disney also extended the service to and from Orlando International Airport which since the launch has seen a big demand. Have any of you guys used the minivan service? Was it easy? Was it worth the price? Let me know in the comments. Now we've spoke about H2O Glow Nights at Typhoon Lagoon before back on the show on the 19th of March but this week Disney has released some brand new concept art. H2O Glow Nights is an after dark party at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon and will transform the water park into a brightly coloured celebration. The party will be hosted by Rex from Toy Story and will feature illuminated water tubes, a DJ hosted dance party on the sand, meet and greets with Toy Story characters including Woody, Jess and Buzz and also limited time food and drinks. The parties start on the 21st of June and run through August 11th. Now you can enter the park from 7 but the parties don't start until 8 and run until 11pm. Now tickets are $55 or $50 for children. Now on to this week's merchandise update. First up we have this brand new Tower of Terror Magic Band which features Mickey and also glows in the dark. 
we can see a fearful Mickey next to Tower on one side and on the other side some of the ride elements. We also get to have a look at what this looks like when it glows as represented by the green in this photo. Now there are two versions of this band, one which glows in the dark and one which doesn't but there is a sticker on the outside to let you know which version it is. Now this band is available in store and retails at $20.99. Next up we have a brand new Sorcerer Mini headband which features a new bow and this retails at $24.99. Coming when Toy Story Land opens will also be this playset of Slinky Dog Dash and this will feature one of the launch sections and also a Slinky vehicle. There's no price on this as of yet and it looks like it's based on the same design as Hot Wheels where you press a button which would launch the car. Now we've spoke about Otterbox phone cases on previous shows and this week we have some brand new Power of Princess cases that will be coming to the parks very soon. These cases are available for the iPhone 7 and 8 including the Plus versions and also the iPhone 10. We have Snow White, we have Belle, we have Ariel, and also Jasmine and Mulan. And these all retail at $44.95. That's it for another week's episode from What in the World. Now I'm interested to know from you guys, if there was one ride you can put into Toy Story Land, what would it be and why? Let me know your answers in the comments below. Now, if you did like this episode of the show, please give us a big thumbs up as that does help us out. And don't forget while you're there to subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload of the show. Now, don't forget you can find us through the week on Facebook and Twitter with all the current news. And until next week, thanks for watching and we'll see you real soon.